Hey guys, Thomas and Silly Genie here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review Kingdom Hearts 3. So, pretty obvious that I'm pretty late on this one, but I finally got through the DLC. So, I'll be reviewing that after the fact, after I talk about the story and the gameplay of the initial game, and then talk about how the DLC uh, works with it as well. So, to understand the story of Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, the first thing I think people would know, or need to know, is that this is not a trilogy, this is a franchise. There are quite a number of Kingdom Hearts games, and Kingdom Hearts 3 incorporates a lot of the material from even the side games as well. So, there is a bigger nod to people who are already fans of the Kingdom Hearts franchise, and to new players, and this is an interesting tidbit, it also gives a little bit of a background in the main menu to sort of say like, hey, even if you are new, here's how to catch up uh, in the quick way if you want to jump in. So, even in the story's writing, I feel like they they tried their best to do both of these things. Simultaneously say to new people, hey, you can jump in, and to also nod to the old fans and be like, look at that thing, it's the Kingdom Hearts thing, you know, from one or two, or Chain of Memories, or three, uh, 362 days but whatever that one's called, you get the point. So, yes, the story is based off of after all of the events. It's the late, the last event. And we once again follow Sora as he reaccompanies Donald and Goofy and another set of wacky adventures as they go throughout all the other Disney worlds, and this time including Pixar worlds, to reestablish his power of waking, which comes from a game, again, I don't even remember playing, or I didn't play, uh, that he could not obtain, or did not obtain, or whatever. Point being, he has to re-level and get stronger. All the while, these, the organization, or uh, Master Xehanort, is creating versions of himself through all of these other bad guys. And it's up to the three of them to uh, jump through the world and try to stop what's going on in a basic sense. Now, like previous installments in the Kingdom Hearts games, some worlds have you kind of copying what happens in each of the movies while others, such as New Worlds, and that being like a world, for example, being Big Hero 6, you experience a new story, which is something I much prefer they have done more of in this series, instead of just Sora, Deld Donald, and Goofy reenacting the pre-existing stories and just sort of semi-interfering. It kind of seems a little bit lazier to do it that way, but eh, it's I wouldn't say it's the worst part of the game in terms of uh, what we are used to. Now at this point of the franchise, there are certain Kingdom Hearts cliches that I'm pretty sure new people will kind of scratch their heads at. Um, how they phrase certain things, how they phrase light and darkness and heartless and all of the other phrases that they use, other cliches that they use of reintroducing themselves and, uh, you know, certain other elements that are taken from other games. Again, more of that nod to people who have been playing the previous Kingdom Hearts games. Uh, we'll know this material and know how it functions a lot more um, than, say, someone were to jump in. Uh, 
and try to figure all of this stuff out. Uh, again, the writing does come across as a bit more clunky because it's trying to do two things at once. And I don't necessarily fault them for this. I don't think, it, again, I don't think it's the worst part of the story. That there is certain elements that I'm going to talk about a little bit later on that definitely irk me to no extent. But that's going to come toward the ending of the story. Uh, in terms of progression, as I mentioned, you go through the different worlds, you solve their problems, and uh, eventually the organization, I'll just call them that because it's simplistic, um, interferes more and more. Uh, you never really directly battle them, unfortunately, because they're saving that for the end of the game. But the stronger parts of the writing, for me at least, is when the organization members come down and they, and they say things along the lines of, Go ahead, Sora. Use your light. These are elements, even from Kingdom Hearts 2, I found to be the strongest parts of writing in that game, is when the organization became the smarter, uh, you know, the they articulated this sort of weird plan using Sora's light as this sort of plan and sort of manipulating Sora. That to me was the strongest part of 2, and it seems to come across in some parts of 3 as well. I wish there was a bit more of that going on throughout the game as well. Just in terms of making the the writing a little bit stronger in terms of, you know, just how shifty the this evil organization is. Again, there are some parts that get there, but I uh, do wish there was a bit more. In terms of how things conclude, um, the ending is where I find the most issue. Uh, in terms of a lot of things, actually. So, you eventually come across all the organization members, and you have to fight all of them at the end of the game. And the way that that just sounds, just saying it, feels like it's its own separate video game. And that's exactly what the third part of this video game feels like. It feels completely disconnected to everything else you've been going through. It has this unfortunate side effect of coming across as the entire uh, first section of the video game is just Sora filler, going through the various worlds, helping other characters solve their problems, and then all of a sudden, abruptly, the organization comes in and it becomes Sora's story, and then all of this stuff just starts happening. It feels so clunky to put all of that in the end of the game. That's why, to me, the story of Kingdom Hearts 2 is a little bit better, because at least in that, the organization jumps in at the middle of the game, and you have to sort of re-enter each world and actually directly face with the organization. In this way, Sora's part in going to each of the world actually makes sense. It actually fits. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that the gameplay is always uh, top-notch in those moments, but hey, I'm saying in terms of story structure, I think that fits a bit better than leaving everything toward the end. Uh, unleashing it all, you're fighting all the organization members at the end of the game, etc., uh, etc. Et and that's not the only problem I have with the ending. Now, unfortunately, this next part was spoiled for me as I was midway through the game and hadn't quite gotten to this point, but I kept hearing people talking about something that bad that happens to Kyrie throughout, especially on Twitter as I was posting it on my things on Twitter as I was going through them. Uh, so I was eventually spoiled about the fate of Kyrie and how she dies, quote-unquote, and this, to me, has every issue I have with Kingdom Hearts, especially this one. Um, and it, it it's going to take a bit to explain, but um, 
I find some things fascinating that I, I, I wanted to make comparisons to. I noticed, after giving it some thought, um, that the Sora, Riku, Kairi triangle, if you will, uh, and their counterparts triangles, uh, sort of reminds me of a direct comparison to um, Naruto. You have Naruto, uh, you know, you have Sasuke, and you have uh, Sakura from, uh, well, Naruto. Uh, and you have all of their little triangle groups that are always the same three type of people, no matter what you're looking at. Uh, and the same thing seems to be here as well. Um, you know, you have your Sora, uh, Riku, and Kairi. You have Terra, um, Aqua, and Ven. You, uh, you have the three in the Axel, uh, Shion, and uh, uh, actually, uh, actually blanking on his name in the middle there. Point being that um, you have all these triangle sets of, uh, you know, you can insert the joke of there are X amount of Soras, there are X amount of Rikus, and there are X amount of Kairis in the game. And again, this is very Kingdom Hearts, and it becomes even more so apparent in this game as you go through it, as you see these characters sort of interact with each other. Um, and, you know, it becomes pretty blatant that that's sort of the point, unfortunately. Um, and the other uh, point in terms of just character study, uh, in terms of Kyrie specifically, at the end of the game where she dies, uh, it seems like they got her story completely backwards. Um, because in the end of Kingdom Hearts 2, we see her fighting with a Keyblade. We know this, we see this, uh, for those who have played it. And in 3, they talk about her training, which in essence doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And then a bigger issue with this is that we never see her training. We just hear her talk about it. Now... This comparison, I think, is also fair. Uh, this treatment of Kyrie feels very similar to one Rey Palpatine, or Skywalker, or Solo, or whatever her last name is now. Fuck it, I don't care. Uh, point being that from the Star Wars, Rey uh, has a very similar treatment of, Oh, she's a super badass in the first two movies, and suddenly in the third movie, she's training? Why? Training isn't a result of being a badass. Being a badass should be a result of training. It should be the other way around. Um, now, there's an easy fix to this. There was an easy fix to this, and they didn't even attempt to do it. Even in the DLC, which is embarrassing if I do say so myself. You know how you could have fixed it? I'm going to explain how you could have fixed this so easily. In the third game, and even if you had to do it in the DLC, which you had an opportunity to, but you didn't. You can, have, you can jump back in time a bit in the story. Um, and... You go back to when Kyrie's talking to Axel about this training, and you can actually have earlier gameplay as Kyrie training Axel to be the Keyblade Master. That way, the training makes sense. She is the one being the master to an upcoming Axel who's trying to learn the Keyblade, and having them duel it out in this little training format, and that could have been, again, something that should have actually just been in the original game, but again, if you were to delegate it anywhere, it could have been in the DLC, but it's not present in either, it's just not there. You just have Kairi fight once in the DLC, that's kind of pathetic if you ask me. Not only to add in the DLC that 
the amount of story in that is next to none. The only thing they do is fix attempt attempt to fix Kyrie's ending, attempt to have Sora save her and then redo a whole, a whole bunch of battles to redux her ending because it was a complete mess. They fucked it up. And they still had an entire different gap of problems that were dealing with Kyrie alone that should have been dealt in the ending. And again, I can't stress this enough that the ending is so, there's so much that they could have done. And they just rush it. They rush the ending of the game because it's its own thing that is just so much battles happening. Now, the DLC implies some pretty cool elements, but they're so short lived. Like playing as Kyrie a little bit, or playing as some of the other characters as well. Uh, Roxas, that name just popped in my head now. Uh, and as well as some of the other characters that you get to play as only in the DLC. Imagine in the initial game, at the ending, you actually get to play as the several different characters. That should have just been the ending of Kingdom Hearts 3. Imagine you're Sora and you're at the end and you're fighting you start you're starting your fight with the organization, you start that battle that way, and all of a sudden, as you're finishing a battle with Sora, the camera sh suddenly shifts to one of the other several battles going on. It's like a war instead of Sora mindlessly interfering with other people's battles, which feels very clunky uh, in itself. Instead, you shift over to that battle with those characters. You play as those characters in those battles, and suddenly you expand upon everything uh, even more. You draw it out. Again, this feels like it could be its own game. Just that sequence of that war, that should have been a war that was been happening between uh, the organization and the Kingdom Blade Warriors. Uh, they even compare it to chess uh, throughout the entire game. Even the opening implies that this is a game of chess. It's a game of going back and forth. Uh, but it's so rushed and it's so clunky at the end. And it just feels so messy. Uh, and it's an unfortunate side effect of leaving all of that to the end uh, instead of, you know, sort of giving us little bits in between. And heck, you can even throw in some other extra playable characters. Suddenly shift to Donald and you're doing all sorts of crazy magic. You shift to Goofy and you're doing all the shield stuff. Charging Goof, uh, you know... All of this crazy stuff, you get to play a little bit more of Mickey, which you get to do in the DLC a little bit more, but that should have been in the game as well. This should have all been in the game. And I don't think that that's actually asking a lot, because, again, I think that should have been drawn out throughout the entire game instead of all being forced into the end of the game. Like, if you're in a specific world, maybe you get separated from your partners, you fight an organization member, you're suddenly this character. Boom. I just solved all of those problems, and you start to just pinpoint, okay, you're gonna play Donald in this world, fighting this boss, you get to use all this crazy magic. Easy. Easy fix. And you sort of shift around, different world, different character. Maybe that could have been, like, the entire game instead of focusing on Sora. I mean, look at this cover alone. Look at all these characters, potential. And you only focus primarily on one. And all these other characters are sort of doing things. And yeah, you sort of shift from Riku from time to time in the game. I forgot to mention that because it's so... It feels like it's trying to shift at such bizarre times. 
um, that that should have been happening more if that's what they were going for, I feel like. Um, again, and you should have been doing it with more characters as well. Um, that would have been way more interesting in terms of just figuring out what all of these characters are doing, uh, figuring out how to uh, split their personalities further apart from one another, uh, because, boy, they do suffer a lot because of the treatment they get in this game. Uh, so I don't have that much issue with the parts of the game that are like, go to X World and explore it. And I don't even care that if it's like the same story, it's just there's so much more potential when you think about what this game could have been in terms of, you know, what they were trying to imply with the DLC. Uh, more playable characters, more opportunities to flesh them out. Uh, you know, there's so much potential there. And when you think about the initial ending without the DLC, it's terrible. Like, Kyrie just dies, and that's how you're gonna end Kingdom Hearts 3? Why? You had her train, or you had her be really good at the end of the second game, and you're just gonna kill her? What was, what was that all about? It feels completely out of nowhere, and she doesn't even fight back at all, by the way. So speaking of, like, all of this training, even if you did show all of it, it still doesn't even make any sense. She just gets captured so easily again. Oh boy. And the reason I, you know, the whole thing with Riku, uh, because he's on his own mission, let's face it, he's like saving terror or whatever he's trying to do. Um, and it doesn't really ever feel important enough. The way it's just presented, it, I don't know, there's something about it. Um, again, maybe if we get to play as Terra, seeing what she was going through, experiencing that, seeing all those things that they showed in the DLC in this game, and do a lot more with it. I think, ter in terms of character moments, I think Aqua had the best opportunity to split off from everything else because of what they did with her at the DLC, but that should have been in the game. Doing more of that with other characters as well, that should have been in the game, throughout the game. Sorry, my cat's going a little bit nuts, but um, nonetheless, in terms of the story and what it is, I'm going to have to give the story of Kingdom Hearts a 4 out of 10. It's very... There are some strong elements. There are really strong elements. My favorite part of Kingdom Hearts 3 is a part where Bloody goes off on one of the organization members. It's quite a funny moment, and it's really strong too, just because of how bizarre it is. And there are other elements of when characters are visiting worlds that are pretty good too, but they are so far and few between when it comes to the overall story in terms of where everything lands. And again, the majority of the ending is just so... There's just so much happening that should have been spread across this entire game that... There's just not enough time to explore any of it now, all of a sudden. Now, all of a sudden, all these characters are being pushed together, and you don't really know that much about them. Uh, other, you know, even if you played the other game, you're like, okay, but what are they doing now? How have they developed here? What is their deal now? You don't really know much. Uh, again, with the exception of Aqua, she seems to be that one character that's like, they're trying to push something more. And I feel like they did, again, in the DLC, they did a lot more, but they could have pushed it even further with other characters. 
I feel like if they gave that treatment to every character in Kingdom Hearts 3, expanded upon that throughout the game, have the organization more well organized throughout the game, have them be more deceptive throughout the game, have them interact with the other characters. You know, Sora's not the only uh, protagonist anymore. Uh, Again, the cover implies that there's going to be that going on, but that's not what we get. Um, It's very misleading, (laughs) to say the very least. So again, pretty weak in terms of story, and it's very unfortunate. Um, Now, I'm going to say this now, that in terms of the story itself, the DLC doesn't add anything. It does not improve the score at all. Saving Kairi, uh, first of all, that should have never been the case in the first place, but as is doing that and saving her in the DLC doesn't improve my score at all, unfortunately. It's, it's not enough. It's not enough to fill every other problem with Kairi I have in terms of what this game is offering. All this talk of training and nothing to show for it. Nothing to actually do. They're just talking and that's boring. I want to play as Kyrie and train with Axel. I want to play that experience. I want to see that character development happen there instead of them talking about it. It's just not interesting at all. Uh... So yeah, I complete I compared the trios to Naruto, so that should tell you something if you don't like Naruto. Um you know, uh in terms of how much is at the end and should have been delegated throughout the game, there's just so many issues. Again, I think a four out of ten is a fair score to give this story. Now, in terms of gameplay, I do think that's where Kingdom Hearts 3 strives. And that's the fortunate part about this video game, is that in terms of the gameplay, I think it's the strongest one yet. Um, from the uh, way and ability you're a- able to upgrade Sora in this game, and the way you're able to combat throughout it, the add all of the elements that were in the previous installments and incorporate them as well. Uh, So if you want to play with Sora and do more of these little uh, keyblade zips, I forget what the actual term is, unfortunately, and I'm too lazy to look it up right now. Um, It's like a zip lock or a zip charge or something like that. Point being that you zip along the stage and you attack. Uh, You know, you can do things like that. You can do these Link attacks with all the Disney or Pixar characters. Um, You know, you can summon them, like the separate summoning thing or whatever. Uh, Again, I don't know what it's called as well, the Link. I think it's just called Links. Um... These little trio attacks you can do with Donald and Goofy, uh, where you're going through these amusement park attacks is the best way I can explain those. You know, these are all optional versions of attack types of attacks you can do. Um, some of them are a little bit clunky, or very few of them are, um, in, in terms of when you figure out how to use them. They're not, you know, they're... Again, they're de- they're pretty good, I would say, overall. Um, and more importantly, they're all optional. So, again, the combat is the most fluid part of the game. And it's pretty consistent throughout. And the DLC, where it lacks completely in story... Uh, actually enhances in the DLC through its battle, uh, which is primarily what I feel the DLC of this game is. It's just a bunch of boss battles, but they are, in terms of, again, just pure battle, the best part of Kingdom Hearts 3. 
these battles are extraordinarily challenging and I do feel like in terms of playing in the mode I played on the game is pretty straightforward and pretty easy now I know people are probably going to yell at me like you know the extreme plans you know you didn't play on the critical mode but nonetheless in terms of just pure challenge I do feel like these bosses definitely put you to the test definitely make you think in different ways uh, you're definitely not going to be spamming anymore, which is something you can do in the main game, I feel like, at least in the normal mode. Um, it is definitely going to challenge you in unique ways. Uh, and you can definitely see that in the Let's Play in the later parts when I get to the DLC. Uh, and that also goes for the secret boss of the Azora. Now that was a challenge and I definitely did say it more than once in that let's play that that boss was definitely way harder than Sephiroth ever was and I stick to that claim he's definitely a lot harder than Sephiroth ever was now to be fair at the time Sephiroth was pretty challenging but most of his once most of his moves got predictable he was Pretty damn easy, all things considered. And not to mention being the maximum level uh, with all of your skills makes them even easier. Compare that to this, uh, Yuzora mixes up his moves, which makes him way more unpredictable. On top of the fact that even being at maximum level, that doesn't really necessarily give you as much of it as an advantage I, I would say it still kind of does but it's not as strong as it was in two they definitely uh gave uh much more of a break in terms of when an enemy is able to get out of your combo in three than it is in two making azora much more challenging from his ability to uh, steal your healing and give it to himself again to just mixing it up and even being able to start the battle in his most difficult form talk about a challenge that was quite quite good at the end of the day there's not much more I can really say about it other than you seeing me fail time and time again and actually having to look up like, okay, what is this move he's actually doing? How do I actually beat him? That's something I never had to do for two. I could actually figure it out. His move, you know, Sephiroth's moves by comparison were a lot easier to read as well in two. Uh, you know, in three, you have his Zora who like does this run up and grab thing. And sometimes... I felt like that move was like the most unfair at times when like he would already be in front of me and grab me instantly. I don't know. There were definitely moments where I almost felt like that there were some points where I was like, ooh, I don't know. Like he has a certain advantage that I don't feel is necessarily always fair. But at the end of the day, after learning the techniques after looking it up because I actually felt I had to otherwise I was never going to get to the end of the game uh, I was managed to beat him and it was very satisfying to to actually get there and imply that there's going to be a Kingdom Hearts 4 which I'm pretty sure no one's surprised by but here we are so in terms of gameplay with the main game and the DLC included, I would still give it a 9 out of 10 in comparison to the story, which is severely lacking. If anything else, what I think more people would pick this game up for is the gameplay rather than the story. Uh, unless you are a fan of Kingdom Hearts already and you're just looking forward to seeing what happens, but I would say you were clearly already disappointed <laughs> based off of what I've seen anyway, at least for one huge chunk of obvious problem that there was. But I had a few more issues in terms of the ending, in terms of 
what could have been in terms of the Kingdom Hearts 3 game. So that's my full review of Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, if you want to see my full adventure, the link to the very first part will be in the link in the description. Uh, but if you also enjoyed this view, review, then links will also be provided to my Discord and also to my Patreon page. Any donations are greatly appreciated. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.